Hi, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I want to share a case that we did recently that's a fairly unique case. Uh, this patient received six implants for a maxillary hybrid denture, and uh, there's a few unique aspects to it, so I'd like to share it. Um, the first thing you'll notice is the prosthetic emergence of this. Now, I've shown this on other videos, and it's beyond the scope of what I can do right now, but um, you can see the implant emergence, and this is the patient's denture. Now, she was scanned with this denture in the mouth, and so as you can see, we've got an emergence on all of these implants that um, comes through either uh, lingual to the incisal edges or through occlusal surfaces, which is what we want for a, um, a hybrid denture. Um, we'll go through the implant positions one by one. And the first thing you'll notice if you look in this panoramic view is that to avoid the sinus, the implant on the right side right here, we've done at, at a pretty severe angle. Um, the reason we did that is just there's there's no bone behind that. Um, as you can see up here in the cross-sectional view, there's just one to two millimeters of bone all the way back, eggshell thin, and so by angling that, we're able to take um, advantage of the most anterior-posterior spread. As you can see, it emerges right through the uh, premolar area, and so this should be very nice. Um, the other implants, uh, you know, not a lot of bone as far as volume is concerned. If we look at this blown up, we can see um, this is actually an implant undersized from what I intended to place. And so this is a 3.0 implant showing, but I intended to place a 3.5. Now, why did I do that? Well, because in doing so, I can make a guide for an undersized implant, and my plan is to be able to expand the site from there so that I'm not removing bone, but we can actually expand up to the size that we need. We'll go to the next implant, and again, here you see the implant um, with a good amount of bone around it. And again, once we just make the osteotomy through here, we'll be able to expand that and maintain that bone on the buckle. We go to our next site. Again, we can see plenty of bone. And finally, we see this implant. And now this implant, I'm planning on placing a 4.3 by 6 millimeter implant to avoid the sinus. Um, again, this is gonna be right under the first molar site. And with all the implant support we have on this side, I have no worries of doing that. So the beauty of doing the scanning uh, protocol that I've done here is that we can actually turn off the denture model and we can see where all of these emerge through the tissue. Um, these all look like they're going to be in good keratinized gingiva and then you can go ahead and create the guide uh, for that. And so here's the guide and I've got a Juul 3D printer in office so I went ahead and printed this. You could also outsource that. That's no problem to outsource. Uh, but again, all of the osteotomies are going to be planned to be one size smaller than what I actually intend to place so that I can expand up with rotary expanders during surgery. So let's go to the surgery now. So here we have the 3D printed guide going into the mouth. And because the guide is actually made to be exactly the same as her relined denture in the mouth, I knew that it would have plenty of stability and that there would be no need for stabilization pins. So just by keeping two fingers on it, I'm able to stabilize this guide very well. So we're starting out with the um, long drill for a 3.0 implant. Again, I'm undersizing all of these osteotomies. And so the four anterior most implants are all going to be using this drill. And so I'm punching straight through the tissue. And as you can see, I pull that out, try to clear any of that tissue debris out uh, with the irrigation prior to going any deeper. And lots of pumping motion with this. We want to keep plenty of water in there to avoid overheating. And we want to clear those bone debris as we go. Uh, so a very simple process. We're going to just sink the drill until... Uh, the drill itself or the handpiece itself bottoms out on the guide drill stop. As you can see right there, bottoming out. From there, we'll just go to the next site. No need to remove the guide. Now, once again, I'm going to just penetrate through the soft tissue initially, then bring that out and clear all that soft tissue out of the drill flutes. I don't want to drive that any deeper down into the bone. 
And so now we'll use our pumping motion. We'll try to keep it uh, well irrigated and once again sink the uh, handpiece until it bottoms out on the drill guide. Moving to our next osteotomy. and bottoming out there and now you might note that I've changed the short drill for this one and you'll notice that the stop is also shorter that's just because this is going to be a 10 millimeter implant instead of an 11 and a half like I had on the uh, other three but same procedure we're just going to sink the drill in until it bottoms out on the guide tube Now the drill that I've used on all four of these in the anterior is the drill for a three millimeter implant. And again, I just stress that because we'll be using um, rotary expanders to get it up to final size. Now you'll see that I've gone to the, the drill for a three and a half millimeter implant. My plan on the two most posterior implants is to place a 4.3, so I'm going one drill smaller. Um, this is the angled implant that I mentioned in the, uh, the software portion of the video. And same procedure, we're just going to sink that until it bottoms out on the guide. And again, plenty of pumping motion to make sure that we get irrigation and uh, allow the, the bone debris to get out of the guide. And so there we go, we've bottomed that out. And so now we just lack our final osteotomy on the other side. And you'll notice right there, the guide tube did come out a little bit. Um, some people freak out a little bit when that happens. It's no big deal whatsoever. If you're really worried about that, you can glue them in. But honestly, I don't. it doesn't bother me. If a, if a guide tube moves a little bit, you just push it back down. It doesn't affect the accuracy of the guide whatsoever. And so now we're doing our final osteotomy and this is going to be for a 4.3 by 6 millimeter implant and so uh, it's a fairly short uh, site in the back there and again this was just to avoid the sinus because uh, the patient did not have uh, any bone volume posterior to that so now what I'm doing is I'm taking a blunt ended probe and I'm first of all in that site verifying that I don't have any perforations into the sinus, which I did not. And now I'm going through all of the other sites and I'm probing against all of the walls, the buckle, the palatal, and I'm making sure that I don't feel any perforations, any fenestrations, um, because if we had any of those things, it might be necessary to flap and potentially put a graft. But again, having planned this on CT and being confident in the fit of the guide, um, I didn't anticipate that that was going to be an issue, and it wasn't. But again, I always verify that. So now we're moving on to the rotary expanders. And so I've measured with that probe how deep the sites were. And now just by using a finger ruler, I can know exactly how deep to sink this rotary expander. And so this just gets rotated in. And we use these in progressively larger sizes to expand the site out as opposed to continuing to drill away bone. And the advantage of that is it's going to make your implant go in tighter. Um, it's going to expand the site without losing uh, more buckle bone. And so it's a very nice tool to have, especially in minimal bone situations. Using the same expander in the opposing site. and now going to the final expander for both of the posterior sides. One of the great things about these, and, and these rotary expanders are available from Blue Sky Bio, 
Um, but one of the great things about these is that they really give you an opportunity to feel how tight your implant is going to be before you place it. So if I was to do this and I feel like I have no stability, that that rotary expander is not going in with any kind of stability at all, you might need to consider going up in an implant size rather than opening the implant only to screw it in and find out that you don't have any stability. So these are a nice way to gauge the, uh, the bone stability before going in with your implant. Now I've gone back to the smaller expander and we'll do the four anterior sites. These are the ones we're replacing three and a half millimeter diameter implants. And again, I measured all of those with the uh, blunt-ended probe as far as how deep to sink these. And I'm not trying to control trajectory whatsoever. I'm letting these feed down into the osteotomy that's already there. Um, so I, really, it's just a matter of letting the handpiece do its work and drive it in. But the expander will track along the correct, correct trajectory within the bone. And now the final side. So now all of the implant sides are their final diameter and ready to accept the implants. Now one thing that I did is I created another guide that would allow me to control trajectory, of the, I'm sorry, not trajectory, but the depth of placement on the implants. And so I just made all of the holes oversized, but what it gives me is a flat platform where I can measure within the software backwards from how, how deep we need to go from the apex of the implant to the top of the guide tube. And knowing that measurement, I can actually just measure with a finger ruler um, how far up on the driver it's going to be. And so with this implant, I knew that I, I could sink it all the way to the hub of the handpiece. And that would put me at my final depth. So there we go. That completes that implant. And it's just a matter of proceeding around the arch this way. So this one is a three and a half by 11. Again, you notice that it's not controlling trajectory whatsoever. This is just uh, giving me a way to control the depth of placement. And once again on this one, we're going to be able to hub out on top of the handpiece. And that tells us that we're at the final depth. And sometimes these can be a little bit difficult to take out uh, because what happens when you're driving these in subcrestal, the driver can be a little bit wider and so it somewhat wedges itself in. Um, that will get taken care of here in a moment when we do some bone profiling on it. Uh, but don't be surprised if you get a driver where it's a little tough to pull out sometimes. That can happen. And so this implant is a three and a half by 10. And that one was supposed to go in one millimeter short of the platform. I, again, I just knew that from the measurement uh, that I'd taken earlier. And so you'll notice now what I'm doing is I'm using what looks like an endo stopper 
This is just a little rubber stopper. It's available from uh, the 3D Click Guide. You can find that online. Uh, but these can be very useful as drill stops or, or just any kind of a depth gauge on any of your implant instruments. And so just like you're doing endo, I've set the stopper to the correct depth and now I'm going to sink the implant until that stopper is even with the top of the tube. And you'll see it stop right there. So all of the implants are in place now and now I'm going to uh, do some bone profiling on these because again when you go subcrestal with these if your healing abutment is any wider than what the um, implant platform is then you're not going to be able to get that to seat and so this is a bone profiler this is actually the one that's available from Nobel BioCare um, and it just consists of a pin that's very similar to a healing abutment that goes over the into the implant and then the uh, profiler goes over the top of that and it rotates and mills away any bone or gingiva uh, that would inhibit seeding. And so now you can see I can place the healing abutment and no problems with that seeding completely. Here we go again. You can see this one is a good bit subcrestal. And so just rotating this down until it bottoms out on the top of this guide pin. And that will remove any excess bone that might inhibit seeding of our components. <clears throat> and so I skipped through the others. I just went through and profiled all of the sites to a five millimeter diameter profile. And again, that allows me to put on healing abutments on all the sites. And this completes the implant procedure. And so notice how atraumatic that was. We've got almost no bleeding whatsoever in this case so when you can do it it's very atraumatic. Now I need to relieve her denture so the way I do that is I squirt in some bite registration material into the denture and then I'll seed it into the mouth and the idea behind this is it's just going to provide me some marks where those healing abutments are. So now I'm taking a slow speed handpiece and just making perforations into the denture through that bite registration material where I see those healing caps protruding. And this is going to allow us to know that everything is sitting passively, that the denture is not sitting up or binding on one of those healing caps, which might cause unnecessary loading or off-axis loading during the healing period. And then once I've done that, I want to come back and just reline it to get a good fit again. So what I'm using here is um, easy pickup material. You can see I've injected it into that after placing the light cured varnish on that allows it to bond to the acrylic. And so this is seating fully passive on the soft tissue. You can see the bite is normal. And so that takes a few minutes to harden up. When you pull it out, you should have a reline denture um, over the top of those healing abutments. Now again, I don't want these healing abutments to sit on there too tightly. And so you'll notice what I'm doing right here is coming back and removing some of that material exactly on the implant site. I want this to be fully tissue supported um, without doing any binding or torquing on the implants themselves. So I'll move, remove all of that and now the denture is ready to be fully seated. And here you can see the final placement. So all of the implants are exactly where they were planned for.